Hey, God bless you. God bless you. It's me, Pastor Lynn, bringing you retro, getting it all back once again. We love coming into your home. We love seeing your response to us, calling us. We give you the CDs and the DVDs. Each time we record retro, our main objective is to allow the Holy Spirit to come into your room and transform you and change you and bring hope and peace to you. And this program is the same thing. This program is going to bring you that peace, that joy. Now, today, my message, we're going to be talking about the thief to your destiny. Something can hold back your destiny. I'm going to uncover it. You're going to understand it. And you're going to be changed. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Stay tuned. It's going to be a revelation to you. But before you hear this timely word, we're going to go to Shabbat. They were phenomenal. And they're going to present free. You want to be free? You'll get free today by the ministry of Shabbat. We'll be right back. My Redeemer has saved me from sin. My soul.
Girls, I know, I know, I know, I know that y'all just finished ministry, and I know that you did. But, you know, through practice, I've told y'all over and over and over again, I want y'all to give more. Daily, how many times do I got to tell you, don't put your glasses on? We're going to get the glare on that camera. It's not going to look good for TV. God, I'm so offended. Rachel. Can you give me more? You, you've got a lot of facial expressions, but you're not giving me what I'm asking you. Cookie. Whatever. More. I've told you. I, you're my daughter. I know that. I expect more. I want more from you, girls. God deserves more. You're not giving me enough or giving God enough. Have a seat. I'm done. Whatever. Last time I Want you to know that was a skit. <laughs> you know that. Because my sermon title today is Offense. You all pick up your, your welcome, your, your bulletins. Take a look at that. Take a look at that. The front page, what does it say? I'm offended. I'm offended. We know that Shabbat is, we just so enjoy their ministry. And they receive correction very well. And it would never be like us to correct them publicly here. You know that. But I needed to bring a point across that offense comes so easily if you open for it. If you're open for it, offense, I'm offended. You try to sell that out in the working world. 
What would happen in the working world, Robert? You said, I'm offended. And they would probably just laugh at you and walk away. And say, well, be offended. What, go, uh, Pick up your last paycheck. No. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. That's true. That's true. Well, it's been my experience in all the years that I've been ministering that uh, people have really lost out because they opened the door to offense. And there is a door that you open to offense. Today we're going to talk about it, and I pray that the Holy Spirit enlightens you as to when you take offense, what you let into your life and into your mind, and how the roadblocks come up and you can't go any further when you are offended. I just want to bring to your attention on Friday night, we only have two of our classes left. I was so touched by Friday night is people praying for people learning how to get the answers. And this Friday night, we gathered and wrote out our petitions and made a big circle around here. And we just passed on our petitions two or three times so we didn't have our own. But the great part of it was we were all praying for each other. You forgot about yourself and you prayed for someone else. And some of the needs in this church are heart-wrenching. But we believe in a God who answers prayers. Amen? amen. Say amen. amen. He will answer your prayer. But the most important thing is you've got to pray. And prayer has taken the back seat in so many of our lives. Requests come in. Requests come in on, on our TV program. Because people are lazy. You pray for me, Pastor. You pray for me. We've got to get to the point where our prayer counts. You have to know that your prayer counts. And so it was on Friday night that everyone had a petition in their hands and they interceded and they prayed. And what a, a, a confidence we got to understand that somewhere in that circle, somebody was praying for me. Isn't that good? And you weren't praying for yourself. Amen. We've got some exciting things coming up this fall. I mean, we don't have fall down here, but according to the calendar. And uh, great changes are taking place. It's going to be very refreshing what the Lord has in store for us here on Fowler Street. And, and we're going to just give it to you little by little, and probably in the next two weeks you'll be hearing more about it. And tonight we're, we're meeting with our leaders for the House of Peace, which we're, we're receiving through the uh, tutelage and through the uh, covering of um, Apostle Guillermo Maldonado and his church. We're being groomed to take care of our city and to take care of you and to spread the word. We're going to evangelize and bring our neighbors and our friends into our homes and tell them about Jesus. Isn't that exciting? Every one of you will be part of the Houses of Peace. I'll tell you a little bit more as we go on. But today, right now, we're going to be talking about offense. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. I'm not offended with I'm you. We get them all. We get every kind of offense. Now, there are offenses that come because you've been hurt. I know that many of you have, that have gone through painful divorces, it takes time. Divorce is ugly. Divorce is never clean. Divorce is a tear. It's not a cut. Two people torn apart. It hurts. And so you hold that hurt in your heart, you hold that offense in your heart. And eventually, if you allow the Holy Spirit, He will heal that deep crevice of hurt that you have in your heart. There are offenses against our parents. Sometimes parents let you down. I was reading, as I was researching a story about a gentleman who was, was uh, 36 years old, and he just felt so hurt by his mother who gave him up when he was six months old. And he got saved and he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ and he found out that he could be uh, relieved of the offense of his mom giving him away when he was six months old. All through his life it hung over. He wasn't able to operate freely. I always thought of being rejected and being betrayed. 
he sought out his mom. And he was instructed, you know, reconciliation is part of Jesus. Try to find her. Perhaps you can make it right. Get it off you, you see. He had to have it lifted off him. He found his mom and his mom said, I have been in torture for 36 years. Remembering that I gave you up. Will you ever forgive me? He forgave his mom. He led her to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he lived free from the offense. Do you understand how detrimental it is to hold an offense? It's just like you drinking poison and wanting the other person to die. Do you understand that? Because you hold an offense. And we in the church are so easily to get offended. You've got to be so careful that you don't open the door because it brings destruction to your body, to your mind, to your spirit. Married couples, believers, you get offended with each other. You've got to stop being offended. You have differences. You work them out. And you get rid of the offense. Your brothers, your biological brothers and sisters, there are some folks that don't talk to biological brothers and sisters because of what they did 10 or 15 years ago. The only one that's going to falter is you as a believer. You cannot have that offense within you. Children. There are children that don't talk to their parents. When was the last time you talked to your parents? If they're alive. You can't hold things against your parents. It's ungodly. Today, I'd like to bring you this message Offense, the, chief, the thief of destiny. The thief of your destiny. We're going to turn to Matthew 24. Starting with verse 10. And in this scripture, Jesus is speaking to the disciples and he's telling him, just as we heard Pastor John speak of, the end times. They said, how will we know? And he began to speak to them. But one segment of the scripture talks about what we're talking about this morning. The end times. Yeah, we're, we are in the end times. I truly believe that most of us are going to see the return of Jesus Christ. Because how much worse can it get? I don't like to turn on the news, but when I put on the, my uh, internet, there it is. Murders, shootings, right here. Finding bodies shot up thrown into the dirt, and no one being able to, no, you don't snitch, or you, they find you in a ditch. That's the word, okay? Thievery, you know, no place is safe outside of the shelter of the Almighty. Do you hear me? When you're under the shelter of the Almighty, you are safe. But it's going to get worse and worse. But not to the believer. Say, not to me. Not to me. Say, not to me. Not to me. You have to understand that if you understand that, this is no time for folly. Our dependence is on the Lord. He will keep you. He will protect you under the blood. Amen? So here it is, Matthew 24, verse 10. Let's read it. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. This is the last day. And offense comes very easily. And you can guard yourself against being offended. When you are in Christ and he is in you, it rolls off you like water of a duck's back. Life is too short to be offended. Luke 17, 1 tells us. Then he said to the disciples, It is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. Ha <laughs> ha! It's impossible. You are a human being. We are in a human society. Stuff happens. Your ugliness comes up. It's right under the surface of your holiness is your ugliness. And you've got to be so careful. 
He said it's going to come. And when it comes, know that your redemption draweth nigh. Now, in that scripture in Matthew 24, the Greek word for offend comes from the word scandalon. This word originally referred to the part of the trap to which the bait was attached. Hence, the word signifies laying a trap in someone's way, an entrapment used by the enemy. An entrapment. It's a setup. Now, we know the will of God for your life. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you. Now I'm asking you, do you know the plans God has for you? Yes. They're plans of success, divine health, prosperity. That is the plan of God. The only thing that can hold back that plan, as we've read, is to be offended. Now listen, stuff happens in life. People hurt you. Things go on, but the mature believer doesn't let it seep into the heart. And it's amazing. In Psalm 55, starting with verse 12, it's amazing how we get offended. For it is not an enemy who reproaches me. Then I could bear it, nor is it one who hates me who, is exalted, who has exalted himself against me. Then I could hide from him. But it was you, a man my equal, my companion, and, and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked to the house of God in the throng. Let me tell you, I froze in my mind years ago when I first came down here for the destructive device of the enemy to kill me. Because we know he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. With all that went on in my life, with the death of my husband, and then his past being dragged up and plopped on my life. And this scripture is so true because if it was a stranger that would have come against me, you could understand it. But 13 years in the church, sacrificing, giving, doing without, going seven days, 24-7, building a congregation from just a few hundred to over a thousand, pouring myself out, as I do here, pouring out, loving the unlovely, feeding the hungry, visiting when they were sick. As soon as things got rough, They came against me. A denomination came against me. Just said, sorry, this is just a little bit too ugly to handle. I'll have to ask you to leave. What happened to me was I was so hurt. I was so offended that I got so sick. I couldn't take the rejection. I couldn't take the betrayal. My mind couldn't take it because I really was true. I did all that I could for them. And the hour that I needed them the most, they came against me. And I'm here to tell you, my mind could not take it. And so it shut down because I was offended. How could they do that to me? Offense makes you sick. It's like I said before. It's like you taking the poison and hoping that they are taken care of. No, it hurts you. It took me over a year to get better. I was so crushed and so hurt. I was so offended by my husband. I didn't even want to say his name. I was so offended. Every time I thought about him, I got more offended. I had justifiable reason, didn't I, to get offended. 
You can justify yourself into a lather as to what people did to you. But as a believer, if you want what Jeremiah 29, 11 says, if you want the promises and the plan of God, you've got to walk a different way. A year and a half, I was attending Pastor John's church. It was a, it was a tank of just cleansing and sitting there and Well, what do you think? Has it affected you? Are you ready to let go of the offense? Don't carry it any longer. I'd love to walk you through being set free from offenses from years ago, maybe most recently. It's going to hold you back. With God's help, you could be set free. Move on to your destiny, your success, even your divine health. It holds you back to be offended. Just give us a call. The number is on your screen right there. and We'd love to pray with you and walk you through how to let go of offense. It'll ruin you. It almost ruined my mind. But I realized that Jesus Christ could make a difference in my life as I forgave. I'd love to send you a CD or a, a DVD of this entire message. All you have to do is call us. The number's on your screen. We love hearing from you. We love giving out our CDs and DVDs. It's like we, we throw our bread on the water. We want to give to you. We're an outreach center. I remind you that we have food pantry here on Tuesday and Thursday. Are you hungry? Come on down between 11 and 1 on Tuesday and Thursday. And, and Thursday is from 4 to 6 for you that work. Outreach center, clothes closet. We go into the parks. We do the same thing. We spread the good news of the gospel. Love coming into your home. Love hearing from you. Until we see you again, be blessed, highly favored, and empowered to prosper.